The gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise in strong support of House Concurrent Resolution 105 as amended. This important bipartisan bill asserts the important constitutional role of Congress in matters of war and peace. And it is my sincere hope that every single member of this institution will vote in favor. It is important for our colleagues to know that this resolution is the result of open discussion and dialogue between both sides of the aisle. It is an example of what can happen when members come together and decide they want to accomplish something meaningful. And I want to thank Speaker Boehner and the Majority Leadership, Leader Pelosi and Minority Whip Hoyer, Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Royce and Ranking Mem Member Engel. And I want to thank my good friends who have helped lead this effort, uh, uh, my colleagues uh, Congressman Walter Jones and Congresswoman Barbara Lee, for working together on this language uh, of this resolution. I want to send a special thanks to all the staff who spent many hours listening to the views and concerns that span the political spectrum of this House about America's engagement in Iraq. In particular, I want to thank Jen Stewart, Rob Karam, Emily Murray, Wendy Parker, Dan Silverberg, Doug Anderson, Tom Sheehy, Ed Burrier, Jason Steinbaum, Janice Kagayutin, Doug Campbell, Myra Resnick, Ed Rice, Jaria Radovosian, Dan Ziza, Ray Celeste, and Cindy Buell and Keith Stern on my own staff. I am very grateful for how hard each of them worked to achieve a consensus. Madam uh, Speaker, this resolution is quite straightforward. It requires an authorization from Congress should the President determine that the United States should escalate its military presence in Iraq. It does not change the President's existing authorities to protect and ensure the security of U.S. diplomatic facilities and personnel, and it does not alter the requirements of the War Powers Resolution. This resolution makes one clear statement. If the President decides we should further involve our military in Iraq, he needs to work with Congress to authorize it. I don't know how Congress would respond and vote on such a request. And for the record, I want to state in the strongest possible way that I think it would be a grave mistake for the United States to re-engage militarily in Iraq. And I want to make clear that the intent of this resolution is not to criticize President Obama. I believe him when he says that he has no intention of significantly expanding our military presence in Iraq. And so far, in each of the three recent deployments to Iraq, that he has announced the President rightfully and formally informed Congress consistent with the War Powers Resolution. Nor is, this, uh, nor is the intent of this, uh, uh, nor is the intent to criticize the Republican leadership. Rather, the intent of this resolution is to begin to reestablish Congress's rightful role under Article I, Section 8 of the Constitution when it comes to matters of war and peace. I believe there is broad, bipartisan, and growing concern that over the past several decades, Congress has ceded far too much of its power to the executive branch. It has happened under Democratic and Republican presidents. It has happened under Democratic and Republican control of the House and Senate. It is not really a partisan issue. It is an institutional one. We simply haven't done our job. My concern all along is that Congress has not lived up to its constitutional responsibilities to debate and authorize the introduction of U.S. forces where they are engaged in roles related to combat. So while, so while this resolution clearly puts the President on notice, it also reinforces the institutional role of Congress in matters of war and peace. Madam Speaker, the time to debate our reengagement in Iraq, should it come to that, is before we are caught in the heat of the moment not when the first body bags come home, not when the first bombs start to fall, not when the worst case scenario is playing out on our TV screens. The time to debate Iraq is when we can weigh the pros and cons of action, the pros and cons of supporting the violent and sectarian policies of the Maliki government or whatever government is cobbled together should Maliki be forced to step down. So I urge all of my colleagues to support this resolution and ensure that further deployment of U.S. troops in Iraq receives the careful debate and authorization it deserves. We owe at least that much to our men and women in uniform and their families, and we owe at least that much to our own democracy and democratic institutions. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Massachusetts.